Как Адош Блокатур Месехет и Вамот, Давбет. Today is actually Давгим, and we're going to start on Бета Мубет, just on the bottom. If you remember in the Гимара, we started focusing on the women. And we asked in the Гимара everything we learned from Ахотиша. And if we learn everything from Ахотиша, right, which means all this concept, we're going to see this actually in Гимара Мубет, but all this concept, Right, we learn from a chotisha. So if we learn from a chotisha that it's going to be poter, sarata, vit sarat sarata. So therefore, the first one that we should have mentioned in the Mishnah was a chotisha. So the Gemara says, and if you're gonna tell me that we're going according to the chumrot, what does it mean according to the chumrot? It means that we're taking the chumra chumra. So for example, what's the most chumra? Sekila but it's going according to Shitat Rabbi Shimon. And according to Shitat Rabbi Shimon, he says Sirifa. Is the most chamul. So therefore, yihachi if so, litzni chamoto bereisha. We should learn chamoto in the beginning. Why? Tikar serefa ba chamoto ketiva. Because the ikar is a serefa. Remember, here you have serefa, you have sekila, and then you have karet. Okay, karet. Okay, those are the three different types that you're going to be having. Okay, so therefore, you should learn which one. Chamoto, because Chamoto is the only one that's written in Furash, the Srefa. Everything else is Derech Haga. Okay? So the answer is the Gemara, but rather, Pito, Kevadata Midrasha, Chaviv He says, no, the daughter is a Dirasha. Meaning, the, the fact that we're learning the daughter, that's only a Dirasha, and it's not Mefurash in the Torah, so therefore it was so precious to the Tana that we learned, right, we brought down the daughter before anything else. Okay, I'm going to share with you just a screen, just to show you, right, the different um, categories. So here, I'm going to zoom it in even more. Okay. Here we have, the Tana is counting the women according to the Kirva Mishpacha. So we're going to actually say over here to do with the family members, okay? But this is to do with, right, it, it's something interesting. The Adom, anything which is in red is Serefa. So you look over here, right? Bito is serefa, right? But beno, but bito is also going to be serefa. You see over here, everyone sees it one more time. If he, did go ahead and if he goes ahead and he lives with them. So the person goes with his daughter, serefa. He goes with but bito, but beno, and his granddaughter. Doesn't matter whether it's the boy or the girl, serefa. Okay, bita, her daughter, right? The daughter of his wife, serefa, right? Again, bat bena bat bita, also the same thing, right? We're going to talk about serefa. So that's all the serefa. Another things of serefa is going to be em chamoto, em chamiv, ve em ishto. These are also in serefa, which is basically the mother of the father-in-law, the mother of the mother-in-law, or the mother of the, of the wife and the mother of those, okay? So it's going upwards. Then we have what's in katom is sekila. So the only one that we have of Sekila, which is in Katom, is Eshet Beno, Kalato. Look, throughout the entire thing over here, there's only one, right? Actually, no, there's two also. Eshet Aviv also. You have here, this Siur is giving you two different cases. This oh, is what yeah. I said. Yeah? Gimel. Yeah? So this is the case of, right? Imoz Beskila, Eshet Aviv Beskila, and Eshet Beno Sekila. Sekila. Those are the orange. Then you have, so katoma sekila. Then you have karet. Karet is anything which is in yellow. Look, here you have, right? Eshet achim, achim me'av, eshet achim, right? Me'a'em, right? Achot aviv. All these cases, this is all yellows. All the cases of yellows are going to be cases of karet. Okay? So now we're going to continue the Gemara. The Gemara says on the Gemara Mudalef, and this is today's daf. Kulu nama midrasha atu. I don't understand you. If you said that we are learning it from achot isha, and that's what we just learned on yesterday's daf. So therefore, not only is bito am adrasha, everything is a derasha. Kulu, all the women there are derasha that we're learning, right? And again, this is all based on Gemara Mudalef. So you're gonna still have to. You know, wait, you know, shwai shwai until tomorrow, right? And, no, until uh, right, a few minutes until to understand that. 
But basically, everything is coming from a derasha. So if everything is coming from derasha, so therefore, why all of a sudden now are you putting bito first? So says the Gemara, no, no, no. You know why? Even though to do with alachot of yibum, it is coming from a derasha, ikari suraihu pehed yakatib behu. The ikar of the isur is written, right, where? Mefurash and the Torah. Meaning all of the ones, whether it's going to be the mother-in-law, whether it's going to be the this, the daughter-in-law, whoever it is, all of them are written in furash in the Torah that a person cannot have relations with them. Okay, so you're right. The yibum concept that it's going to be poter v'chule v'chule, that is a drasha. But the ikar of the isur that a person cannot live with them is written in furash in the Torah. Bito, however though, his daughter, now here we're not talking about a person's daughter, a regular daughter, because if it's a regular daughter that you already learned from Batishto, that if right now the daughter of his wife is prohibited, so if for now that his wife is his wife and this is also his daughter, for sure it's going to be prohibited. So here it's actually Bito Manusato. Manusato means that he violated a woman and he had a daughter from that woman. So now it says here, the Amar Rava, because Rava says, Amali Ravitzak Baravdimi, right? Says Ravitzak Baravdimi, Atia Hena Hena, the Atia Zima Zima. What does that mean? We have to use two different Gezerot Shavot in order to teach you the prohibition of Bito Meanusato plus the Onesh of Srefa from Bito Meanusato. Why? Right? If you pay attention, it says over here like this it says in the Pasuk Vaikra. I'm in the footnote four for the ones that have the, in the Hebrew, right? Or in the English, you probably also, it's in the, in the beginning. It says in Vayikra, Ervat Isha Uvita Lo Tegale. The Erva of a woman and her daughter, you're not allowed to reveal. It doesn't matter whether it's her daughter or her granddaughter, well, sorry, it's the granddaughters, right? It says it's either the woman or her daughter or the granddaughter. It doesn't matter whether it's the granddaughter because of the son, or because of the daughter, or babita, you're not allowed to take them to reveal right their nakedness. What does this mean exactly? This pasuk, it's already written, batisto, bat babita. Okay, whether it's from him or from another woman, bito, right? Meanusato is not here. Why? Because in this pasuk it says isha irvat isha. Isha means that there's Ishut. What does it mean Ishut? It's his wife. Anusato, it's not his wife. He violated a woman. And then she had a daughter. So therefore, you cannot learn from this pasuk a person's daughter or the granddaughter, right? Meaning his own daughter or granddaughter. You can't learn from that pasuk. Bito me Anusato. Because since Anusato is not his wife, and here it says, me purash, ervat Isha, right? Ubita lo de eba pena eba bita. So therefore, it cannot be talking about bito menusato. There's another pasuk. Okay? The second pasuk now says, ervat bat pinchas. This is now in Vayikra, in, in, in Yudchet, it's, it's pasuk yod. Ervat bat pincha uva bitecha lo tegle vekevetecha ena. Now this pasuk does not say isha. This pasuk just says, ervat bat pincha o bat pitcha. So here we're talking about a granddaughter. But it doesn't matter whether the granddaughter is from the boy or from the girl, meaning from his son or from his daughter. Now, here it does not say Isha, right? But, right, it does not say either his daughter. So, therefore, we make a Gzera Shava. Henna, Henna, okay, because it says, Kirvatecha Henna. And the first Pasuk said, Shara Henna Zimani. So, therefore, we're doing Henna, Henna, okay, that from his wife, Henna, right, is Menusato Henna. So just like to do with Arayot from his wife, the Torah prohibited the daughter, just like the granddaughters. So too, the Arayot from Anusato, that it was not written, right, Isha, right? It wasn't written the word Isha. It just said, So Henna, Henna, just like by the first case of Henna, it was written by the wife, that the wife's daughter is prohibited. So to hear the guy's daughter is prohibited, even though it's Anusato. So therefore, what happens is that we're learning bito meanusato from a gzera shava. So therefore, that's why the, that's the, the, the concept of the isur, that it was not an isur mefurash, right? You had to learn it from gzera shava. Everybody else is written. Person can live with the daughter-in-law, 
person going to live with mother-in-law, a person going to live with this, with that. But to do with his daughter from an Anusa was not written in the Torah. You have to learn from a Dirashah, from a Gzera Shabbat. So the fact that you have to learn from a Gzera Shabbat, that's why it was such a precious thing. So ask the Gemara, Hashta damar takol minta dat yam dirasha chaviva le. But now that you just told me that anything that comes from a dirasha is so precious, litni la achotisha levaso. So then teach me achotisha at the end. Because achotisha was the only thing which is mefurash, right? That was written over there that is going to be poteret at tzara and tzara tzarata. And everything else you learn from achotisha. So if everything's a dirasha except for achotisha, the number 15 on the list should have been a chotisha. And the, everything else should have been everybody else, right? Because everything's from a dirasha. So the dirasha is chavivale, it's more precious. So teach me all the dirasha. And the last thing should be a chotisha. So answers the Gemara, I did the aire, right? Be surachvata, aga, by the way, right? I did by the way that we are learning, isurachvata, the isur of achayot which is basically whether it's going to be his, his sister from the mother, right? Or the father's sister, right? Or the mother's sister and things like that. Since he was teaching about achvach, that means brotherhood, right? That there was a, a kinship between them. Tana achot ishto. So immediately we already taught achot ishto, right? So ask the gimana, fine. But still, why don't we learn, right? This one at the end, which means, right? We should have, taught kalato before achoto miimo, right? And then, meaning kalato is the daughter-in-law. Remember, the daughter-in-law was actually sekila, was the most stringent. So we should have learned kalato even before achoto miimo, and then we could learn achot at the end. Why did you leave kalato until the end? So now listen to this, and this is where we're going to get to the pictures again. Elatana kurve kurve nakat. But the tana is learning the levels of kurva. The levels of kinship, of when a person is going to be, uh, how do you call kinship? When a person is going to be, um, um, the levels of, okay? So now it says here like this. This is where it is, where we're mentioning again the Tanae Kurva. So look over here. This is going to be talking about the kirva, about how a person is. So here is Ha'adam in the middle. You see Ha'adam in the middle? Okay. So the, the way that we're going to learn it is, is as follows. A person is going, we're going to learn the first level. What is the first level? Bito, ubat bito, ubat bino. So the first level of closeness. Right? This is the, the picture at large. The first level of closeness. This is the Adam in blue. Okay? So therefore, the first level of closeness yeah, is going to be Bito, the daughter, which is right here. And then Bat Bito u Bat Beno, right here. So the daughter and the granddaughter. Doesn't matter whether it's from the daughter or from the son. Okay? This is the Krovot Michel Atzmo. His family members. And he's got his daughter and his granddaughters. Doesn't matter whether it's from the girl or from the boy. The ID de Tana Shlosha Dorot. Since. Okay. Right. Now that we're going to thorough learn three generations. Yeah, the ID that since we're learning, right? Or since or Derechagab. It's like, by the way, by the way that we're learning three generations, because you have the daughter, granddaughter, and granddaughter, but it's three different people basically. Shlosha dorot lemata dide below him. Tana nami shlosha dorot lemata dida. So now over here, this is the guy's wife. On this one right here. You see this guy, this one woman over here? On her side. This is the man in blue. Yeah. And this is his wife. So now we're going to learn. Just like by him, we learned these three, which are in red. So to now we're learning these three in red, which is going to be who? Right? Batishto. The daughter of his wife from another marriage, right? Or, right, it says here, bat bina o babita. Over here, these three. So, for since we started in our Mishnah, bito, bat bino, bat bina. So, we're going to learn, right? Bat ishto, bat bina, babita. And that's the order of our Mishnah. If you pay attention to our Mishnah, it says, 
Bito, bapito, bapeno. And then we go to the wife. Batisto, bapena, bapita. Correct? Okay. Next, says the Gemara, the ID the Tana Shosha Dorot Le Mata Dida, Tana Shosha Dorot Le Mala Dida. Since we're already talking about three generations below her, now we're going to go three generations above her. How do you do it? How do you do it? Married to her, her mother or her grandmother? So, so how is it her? Her, it's going to be to her mother, which is Hamoto, and then the mother of Hamoto or the mother of Hamid. That's on the top. Look at the picture. You have it over there. You have, right? The mother. These are these three in red. Okay. Fine. Now we learn. Now we learn. Okay. Now we learn. Right? As follows. <laughs> so now that we just spoke about the three below him. Right? His daughter, granddaughters, the two here. So that's three people down here. We learned three below her. So that's her daughter and her granddaughters. Then we, once we learn the three below her, we're going to learn, learn three above her. So this is going to be her mother, which is the mother-in-law, and the mother of the mother-in-law or the mother of the father. -in -law. Okay? Now we learn the Tana. Now we're going to learn Achoto, the Achot Imo. Now we're going to learn Achoto, his sister. So that's over here. Okay, we're going to learn his sister. Yeah? One second, let me just get this bigger. Okay. This is Achotome Imo. Okay, one second. Dam. Yeah, this is Achoto. Okay. This one. Okay, so this is Achoto. So we're going to learn Achoto Mimo, the Achot Imo. So Achot Imo is this one. Achot, uh, sorry, Achot. Yeah, but it's from his mother. This is Eshet Aviv. Um, Achoto, Achot Imo is. I hear this. Sorry. Imo. Right? And Vachotimo is over here. Yeah? So one more time. So we learned, right? Achoto, which is his sister. Okay? And then we learn Achotomimo. And then we're learning here, Imo, Vachotimo. The truth is, we also have another picture, which I'll show you one second. The Aidi, the Aidi Beisurachva. Now that we're talking about brothers, because again, this is his brothers now. It's talking about his sister or his mother's sister, right? Tana Achotishto. So now we go to the wife's side. So now we go to the wife's side over here, remember? Here's Ishto. So Achot Ishto is over here. This one right over here. This is Achot Ishto. Okay. Uvedinu de lekadme lekalato mikameh achiv shalabemo. It would have technically been more proper to do the kala, the daughter in law, before the wife of the brother, Sheloya Beolamo. Why? Delomishum kurvahu da sira. Because the wife of the brother, Right, that, that he died before he, this guy was born was not because of a kurva of himself that she's prohibited, right? Because remember that the, obviously kalato is much more hamura because it's sekila. But the fact that we're talking about brothers, tana So we learned eshtachim, even though he was not in the world. And then we learned kalato because kalato, even though it's more strict or mitzvah punishment, but there's no blood relation. It's only your son's wife. Mm -hmm but there's no real blood relation. So because of that, we did not do it. Now I'm going to show you the next picture because the next picture, right, is going to go one by one, right? Look carefully. Is This is Lemala Dida, okay? So look over here, right? And it says like this, Sarah, Yaakov, and Miriam. So Yaakov Avinu, Yaakov gets married to Sarah and Miriam. These are two of them, okay? So he gets married to two wives, okay? Le Sarah, Nolad Reuven. So you have two children. Okay? So now here it says, right? Because again, we're not talking about what does it mean, Lemala Dida, above her. So now, Sarah, Leolam Lotipol, Lifner Uven Libum, Sharehi Eshet Aviv. That means here, over here, this is Sarah. Sarah can never go to Ibum, right? To Shimon. Why? Because that's Eshet Aviv. 
That means even with exactly which you're not allowed to do that. Now you have the next one. What's the next one? The next one is Kevin. Okay, now we're gonna see this like this. Okay. Now says the Gemara as follows. Okay, so until here we're clear. Yeah, we learned the order of the people. Okay, by the way, you also have this in this one. If you remember in the share screen of the other one. Um, here we have, you see here, Kroveat Smo, his family members, Bito, Bapito, Bapeno, these are all in Srefa, and this is Gimel Dorot Lemata Dide, below him. The next one was Krove Ishto, the family of the wife, Gimel Dorot Lemata Dida. So you've got Bat Ishto, Bapena, Bapita, all in Srefa. Then you have the other family members of his wife, because once you were in his wife and you went Gimel Dorot Lemata, you go Gimel Dorot Lemala, right? So what's Gimel Dorot Lemala? It's the mother-in-law, the mother of the mother-in-law, the mother of the father-in-law. So these two are Srefa, and the mother of the father-in-law is Karet, okay? Because it's a, it's one lower level. The next is Kroveat Smo, his own family members, but now it's not his wife or himself, Mamash, that it's his daughter, granddaughters, or his wife and her daughters and granddaughters, but now it becomes now the brotherhood. What's a brother-in-law? So achoto mimo, which means the brother, the, the sister from the mother, right? Or achotimo, the aunt, which means the mother's sister, or achotishto, the sister-in-law. All those are in karet, because they're all to do with sisterhoods. Now, once you did the sisterhoods of, of women, now you're going to men, isuri achva. So you have eshet achiv mimo, the wife of the brother from the mother. You have eshet achiv shaloya v'olomo, the, the wife of the brother that was never in this world. And then you have the last one, which is going to be Kalator. Kapish, until here we're clear? Okay, very good. Continues the Gimara. Yeah. What is the reason why we learn Potrot? If you realize in the Mishnah, somebody asked this actually yesterday. It said, Potrot They exempt Sarotehen. Right? Litni Osrot Sarotehen. Why? If you say it's Patur, Mashma, if they wanted to, they could do it. Who asked me that yesterday? Somebody, I think it was you, no? Somebody said to me yesterday, yeah, but one second, here it just says that it exempts them. It exempts them just means that they don't need to do it, or it means that if they wanted to, they could do it. Somebody asked that yesterday. Yeah, it was, it was you. Yes, the Yibum process. So if you say, my idea, the Tanapotrot, litvi osrot, that prohibits them. So answers the Gimara, itana osrot, if it would have been only written osrot, have mina surliya bem. I would have thought that osrot means it's a surliya bem. Aval michlat chalitza, that you still have to do chalitza. Kamashmalan, that you don't even have to do chalitza. That's what you're doing patur. Patur means patur legamre, that it completely exempts you even from chalitza. Because if I would have said osrot, it's a sur to do yibum, but you still have to do chalitza. Comes teach you that even chalitza you're patur. It's patrot legamre. So ask the gemara, velitni asur alachot. So why don't we just say asur to do chalitza? If I say to do asur to do chalitza, yeah, yeah, yeah. obviously you're not allowed to do yivum. So says the Gemara, my covet, what isur would there be if you do chalitza? Yeah. At the end of the day, there's no, okay, you did chalitza. So now what? A person comes and they do chalitza. What is chalitza? Chalitza is nothing. It's not yivum. Yivum, you, you might be having relations with your brother's wife, and that's say isur doraita. But chalitza, you didn't do anything. You just did chalitza. Yeah. What's a big deal? So says the Gemara, alama lo, he says, what? You know why you're not going to say an isur also be chalitza? Imata omer cholezet, so then mit yabemet. Which means like this. If I'm going to say that you do chalitza, so then people are going to say you could do yibum as well. Right? Yeah. Why? Because it's just natural. Meaning if you say you could do chalitza, so you could do yibum. But here you're saying you're not allowed to do yibum. Right? But you could do chalitza. So he says, no. Because if you say that you could do chalitza, Automatically, you're going to come to do your boom because people they, they touch them both. You Say, listen, right? Do you, which means that you're, you're able to. So says the Gemara, Kevan de Bimkom Mitzvah, Huda Asida Tzara. Since in a place of a mitzvah, that's when it's prohibited the Tzara, okay? Which means that there's Tzara Terva, Shelo Bimkom Mitzvah, Sharia. And if it wasn't going to be Bimkom Mitzvah, you're going to tell me it's permitted, Mishumhachi Tani Potrot. Because that we came and we learned potrot. What does that mean exactly? Right? Because basically this, if you would not have said the word osrot, I would have said it's mashma from here, right? That the erva is creating a new tzara. 
that because of that, the erva is creating it that it's a sur to do yibum. And if so, I would have said that if it's going to chal bimkom mitzvah, kol sheken, that it should chal shelo bimkom mitzvah. And then we would have prohibited this woman, which is sarat erva, to get married to anybody, right? Even if she was married to somebody else. Therefore, we have to say potrot, which means that it's not going to be a nisur on the tzarot. It's potrot otami yibum, and therefore, mimila that tzarot or asurot, because of the yisur of eshetach, because if not, she cannot get married to the brother's wife. And that's why. So says the Gemara, okay, fine. Now that makes sense. Okay, let me just check. So now this is the case. So we just mentioned Kevin and Mikom Mitzah. What does that mean? You have the case of Reuven and Shimon are brothers. Look at the picture. Reuven and Shimon are brothers, right? Reuven has a daughter that her name is Rachel. Okay, now what happens? Shimon gets married to Miriam and Rachel. So Shimon gets married to his niece, Rachel, and also Miriam. Okay, then what happens is, is that it says over here, Shimon dies, right? And Miriam and Rachel go to Yibum in front of Reuven. Now, even though there's a mitzvah, right, to do Yibum, right? Miriam is not allowed to do Yibum. Why is Miriam not allowed to do Yibum with Reuven? Because she's considered Tzadat Habat, the Tzadat of the daughter. Rachel cannot get married to her father. So therefore, when Shimon got married to the niece, right? And then Shimon got married to Miriam. Okay, and now Shimon dies. So Miriam cannot get married to Reuven because it's going to be Tzarat Habat. Okay, so that's, that's what we said. So we're saying, if she cannot get married to that, that's Bimkom Mitzvah. So Shalom so, so Bimkom Mitzvah is going to be permitted. What is Shalom Bimkom Mitzvah? Reuven Velevi, oh, sorry, Reuven has a daughter, Dina. That's this case. Reuven has a daughter, Dina. Now what happens is, Reuven, right? Uh, here you got Moshe, that he has nothing to do with Reuven gets married to Miriam and Dina. You see it? Right? Here you have it. Moshe gets married to Miriam and Dina. Then what happens is, is that Moshe dies. Now to Reuven, he's allowed to take Miriam, even though it's Sarab Bito, because it's not Bimkom Mitzvah. Okay? I don't know what, he's a Mutala Kachat, means he's allowed to marry. No, there's no Yibum here. One more time. Everyone understood the case. Reuven and Moshe, is there any connection between Reuven and Moshe? No. No, there's no connection between Reuven and Moshe. Moshe is a stranger. Moshe got married to, it's, a, it's the son-in-law, exactly, but he's a stranger, meaning there's, there's nothing to do with him. There's no blood relation. So what happens? So therefore, even though Reuven's daughter was a co-wife to Miriam, when Moshe, the son-in-law, dies, Reuven could marry his son-in-law's wife. Right, which is Miriam over here. Why? Because it was Shelo Bimkom Mitzvah. There was no mitzvah there. So therefore, there was no prohibition. So that's why we learned the word, right? Osrot. Okay? Fine. Let's continue. So says the Gemara, Umay Iria Detani Mina Chalitza Mina Yibum. We learned in the Mishnah. What do we learn in the Mishnah? We learned in the Mishnah, Chamesh Sinashi Botor Tarotomi Tarotomi Mina Chalitza Umina Yibum. So ask the Gemara, my idea the Tani min chalitza min yibum. Just say mina yibum and that's it. Tell me, fifteen women exempt from yibum. So says the Gemara, itana mina yibum. If it would have only been written in the Mishnah, mina yibum, have a mina. I would have thought to say michlatz chalitza yibum elom yama that they do do chalitza, but they are not allowed to do yibum. Right? That means again, they do. They're not allowed to do yibum, but they still do chalitza. Kamash Moran comes teach you kol aolel yibum olel chalitza. Anybody that can do yibum. Does chalitza, meaning there's shayach the chalitza. The whole shenu libeh, but if you cannot do yibum, there's no chalitza either. Enu ole le chalitza, there's no chalitza. And therefore it has to be ptura mina yibum, umina chalitza. So ask the Gemara, but what was the terminology of the Mishnah? The terminology of the Mishnah was, chamesh se nashim potro tzad temet tzad tzad mina chalitza, umina yibum. What should have been written first? Mina yibum, umina chalitza. So ask the Gemara, velitni, velitni, and we should have learned Right, the litni mina yibum mina chalitza. Switch it. Why are we saying mina chalitza mina yibum? The litni mina yibum mina chalitza. Inami, or you could have just said mina chalitza by itself. Because if you tell me now it's patur from chalitza, I already know it's going to be patur from the yibum. So answers the Gemara. Abba Shaul. This is going according to Shitav Abba Shaul. The Amar mitzvat chalitza kodemet le mitzvat yibum. Meaning the Tanavar Mishnah is like this. 
when you have a choice, Yibum or Chalitza, what's the best way to do? It's always better to do Yibum, right? That's the way we always learn because the Chalitza is like a, it's like some, it's a getaway from it. You understand? Like, you know, it's a, it's a disgrace. They take off the shoe, they spit at him, you know, like they spit in the, you know, it's like, you know, you know, you know, he doesn't want to build the house as a brother. It sounds like Chalitza is a negative. It's not the, the real thing should be Yibum. Here it's saying, according to Shittat Abba Shaul, the Chalitza comes before Yibum. Meaning Chalitza is more important to do Chalitza than to do Yibum. So because of that, that's why it says, meaning Chalitza means Yibum. That's why, because it's a higher off importance. Woman. Okay? Yes, exactly. So now the Gemara says, Minyana de Reisha lemiute mai. At the, at the beginning, at the beginning, what did it say? Chamesh Shesre Nashim. It gave us a number. Right? right? Minyana. So Minyana of the Reisha what is it coming to exclude? Right? When it says 15, 15 is coming to exclude something. Uminyana the seifa, also at the end, it said, Hare elu potrot, right? When it says also the minyan, right, of Hare elu potrot, because that was the end of the Mishnah. The end of the Mishnah came and it said, right? It said over here, Vichol elu potrot. So he says, what is it coming to exclude also? Right? What's coming to exclude? So Gimel Amubet, 3b. So the Gemara says, Lemiute de Rav. Asi. It's coming to exclude Rav and Rav Asi. Rav holds that Sarat Sota is Petura Yibum. Okay? And Rav Asi holds Sarat Ailonit is Petura from Yibum. You know what Sarat Sota is? Imagine right now a person has two wives. A person has two wives. Mm-hmm. Yeah? That's another wife, by the way. That's even worse than another wife. Yeah, so know. what happens is a person that's Yeah, what happens is is that a person right now has two wives. One of the wives is suspected of cheating. So she's a sota. Now what happens is the guy dies. Right? The, the husband dies. No kids. Right? No kids. The husband dies. Sarat sota, meaning the other wife of this sota, he says, is ptura from Ibum. She's Ptura from the Ibum. Why? Because of the fact that we hold that probably, you know, there was like an immorality over there or whatever it is. So even though they were still married, right? That's what it says here. Right? And then afterwards he dies. the Sota and Sarata are Ptura Ibum Chalitza. Now, even though the, the Sota did not become prohibited to her husband, nevertheless, it's like an Erva. So once it's an Erva, because she becomes Kiilu prohibited to her husband, She's Ptura from the Ibum, and therefore she's going to be poteret, Sarata from the Ibum. The second case was Sarat Ailonit. What is Sarat Ailonit? Sarat Ailonit is, is that a person that gets married to an Ailonit, right? And he also had another, another, another wife. He dies without anything. So both of them are going to be Ptura from the Ibum. Why? Because since the Ailonit is not fitting for Ibum, because she cannot have children, right? So therefore, she's prohibited, right, to get married to do the Ibum. So if the Sarat is also prohibited to get married to the Ibu, to the Yavam. Okay, so those are two different cases. Uh, so ask the Gimara, that means basically this, we had two Mi'ut. We had two Mi'ut, two exclusions. They were twice written, right? The 15, so the number 15 is coming to exclude something. And Hare'elu Potrot is also coming to exclude something. So two exclusions. What are the two exclusions? It's coming to exclude the Shita of Rav and Ravasi, that Rav says that Sarat Sota is also Ptura from Yibum, and Ravasi says Sarat Ailonit is also coming to is Ptura from Yibum. Obviously, our Mishnah didn't hold of that, and therefore, our Mishnah said specifically 15 and not more, and specifically Are Elu and not more, because they're coming to exclude Rav and Ravasi. So ask the Gemara, according to Rav and Ravasi, the mute might, but according to them, if they are included in the account, so what is the Mishnah coming to exclude them? Because according to them, they do all that it is Petura Mibum. So therefore, you need to exclude another two cases. Because remember, if it says 15, 15 comes to exclude a number, a, a case. And if it says Hare Elu Potrot, the Seifa also, that's also coming to exclude a case. Now, if you just told me, according to Rav and Ravasi, that they come and they are learning another two cases, and their cases are per- permitting, meaning Potrot, they're exempting from, from, from uh, Yibum. So for obviously, it's not like that. So says the Gemara, Right? If you're gonna tell me, if you're gonna tell me like this, if you're gonna tell me 
that they both hold of each other because we could have answered that maybe each one argues on each other. So if each one argues on each other, at least one of them, right, holds, I'm coming to exclude the other one. Meaning the one that holds Sarat Sota doesn't hold of Sarat Ailonit. The one that holds Sarat Ailonit does not hold of Sarat No, so it says the Gemara, if they both do agree to each other, if they both agree to each other, one of them is to exclude Sarat Mema'enet. Remember, what was the Mema'enet? The woman that the mother or the brother got her married off, right, before Bar Mitzvah, and therefore she could do Mi'un. So that Sarah of the woman that she's Mema'enet, she's going to be Poteret also from Ibum. And one of them is coming to exclude Mahzir Grushato, that also, right, it was big Shita. That if somebody gets married to his wife and then she gets married to somebody else and then she gets divorced, she's never allowed to go back to the to the first husband anymore. So the Gemara is talking about that he's machzir grushaton, not according to the halacha, and then he dies. So his wife is a sur to do yibum. Now if she had a sara at sara, so that wife also is going to be a surah to do yibum, right? She's ptura because of that. So says the Gemara. So if they both hold of each other, so there's another two cases: sarat memayenet and sarat machzir grushato. And if they don't hold of each other, one of them is excluding his friend, and one of them is coming to exclude either Tzarat Memayenet or Tzarat Machzid Krushato. Now, I'll ask the Gemara, or Rav or Ravasi, but according to Rav and Ravasi, Litzninhu, right? What is Tzninhu? With two nuns? Yeah, Mishnah. So Litzninhu, we should learn it in the Mishnah then. Because if according to them, if according to them, these two are included, according to us, they were excluded. Because that's why we had the number 15 and the last one where it said these ones. But if you're going to tell me then that they should be included, so why don't we learn it in the Mishnah then? So we should learn Sota and Ailonit, right? So answers the Gemara, Lefi She'ena B'tzarat Tzara. We cannot add by the Sota and Ailonit, we cannot add a case of Tzarat Tzara. Right, which means that these women only prohibit on the achim equally, but there's no it, it it's on all of them equally, and therefore since it's on all the brothers equally, it will never become a case of tzarat tzarata. Remember, in our mishnah, how do we start the mishnah? The only way to get tzarot tzaroten were these fifteen, and that's why if you remember, in every single one of the of the how do you call it, the cases, we had the tzara. And sarot sarotehen. We had both cases. Why do we have both? Because it was only a tzara for one, not for another. Because let's say, for example, this guy could not get married to the niece, but the other brother could get married to the to this wife because it was also a niece. It was okay, or things like that. So therefore, you had a case of sarot sarot. But in a case over here, you cannot have sarot sarot. So since you do not have sarot sarot, so therefore it's going to be not mentioned in our Mishnah. So says the Gemara. Now that we just finished with the lashon of the Mishnah. The Gemara is now going to be mevarer da halacha that anerva sarata v'tsarat sarata are ptura. Now we're going back to the beginning. If you remember, how do we learn these fifteen cases? How do we learn these fifteen cases that they're all exempt from yibum? Remember, when it says exempt, it means that they're not allowed to do yibum, neither chalitza. How do we how do we know that? How do, where do we learn it from? What do we say? We said it. We answered that question already three times already. Very good. Very good. So it says over here, they learn it from Achotisha. So it says the Gemara, from where do we know these words? That these 15 are going to be exempt. How do we know these words? The Tanura Banan, because we learned in a Braita to do with Achotisha, Isha la Chotah Lotika, Litzror, Legalot Ervata Lea Bechaya. A woman to her sister, you're not allowed to take litzror. Litzror means to make her into a tzara. Because if you're going to take two sisters and get married to two sisters, you just made those two sisters that before they had a sistership, before they had like a brotherhood, now they become tzara to each other, right? Like the chel and you're not allowed to a person to get married to two sisters, right? So it says over here, isha lachota lotikach litzror legaloter vata alea bechayeh during her lifetime, right? Bechayeh shelishto. Because during your lifetime, you cannot get married to two sisters. So says the Gemara, what does it mean when it says Aleha? What does it mean when it says Aleha? Again, one more time. When it says Aleha on her, 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 on
right? What does it come to teach you? Right? It could have just said legalot right? What does it say? Legalot v'ta aleha b'chaya. What's aleha? So lefish neemar. Since it says also to do with the ibum, it says there to do with the ibum a woman that her husband dies without children. It says yevama yavo aleha. The yevama will have relations on her. Right? Because remember ibum. How is ibum done? Through relations. Right? So he says, Shomea ani, so I learned from this pasuk, Shafilu bechat mechat mikol arayot amurov Torah. So I learned from you that even one of the arayot in the entire Torah, hakatu medaber, which also, there's the concept of yibum. Right? Why? So therefore the Torah comes and writes aleha, to do with the yisur of achotishto, to learn a gzera shava. Neemar kan, it's written by achotishto aleha, v'neemar lehalan, it says by yibum aleha, just like by Yibum, it's talking about for a mitzvah, which means that there's a mitzvah to do Yibum. So too here by a chotishto, it's bimkom mitzvah. There's a mitzvah. So the Torah says, you still cannot take it. Which means that even if it's going to be bimkom mitzvah, you still cannot come and take her. Even for the Torah of Yibum. So therefore from here you learn you're not allowed to get married to a chotishto, even if she's falling in front of him because of Yibum. So even if Achot Ishto, which is his sister-in-law, right? It's his sister, his wife's sister. She falls in front of him to Yibum. Because for example, let's say she's married to his brother and now the brother dies. He cannot get married to her even for the mitzvah of Yibum. Why? Because automatically that would mean that he's married to two sisters. sisters. And if he's married to two sisters, right? It's going to Follow be prohibited. Follow the blood. Yeah, it's going to be prohibited. So therefore, that's it. It doesn't work. So therefore, from here, we learn that by a chotishta, right? Here we learn it. Until here we go. So says the Gemara, li ella hi. I only know a chotishto, that she's asura bi'ibum. Sarata minan. Fine. So now we just found out. A person, two brothers are married to two sisters. Yeah. yeah? One brother dies. Yeah. So now his sister-in-law, which was married, cannot get married to him. Because it's going to be the wife's sister or two sisters in the sister. So even in the case of a mitzvah, even in the case of a mitzvah, you cannot do the ibu. And that's what we learned from a chotisha. But how do we know about now the tzara though? The tzara, there's no, if the brother, so, okay. if his brother was married to his sister-in-law plus another woman, a complete stranger, how do we know that that other woman is going to be exempt from Khalid Tanibu. I understand the sister-in-law, because it's uh, two sisters, you but cannot marry, right? But, she, but how do we know that? How do we because know we, that? That's, like example. that's a Mishnah, but how do we know that? That's what the, the Gemara is trying to analyze. How do you know that? The Mishnah gives you a Psaq, right? Right? But how, where do they get it from? So the says the Gemara, Minayim, Tamulomar, Litzror. When it uses the terminology Litzror, the word Litzror is extra. Right, because it just pursued. Just say, anoset achot ishto bechay ishto. Right, he's making them tzarot. So therefore, why did it add the extra word litzror? Tzara, create. Tzara, you're creating a tzara. You're creating a hate, a hatred. Tzar liyamakom. It's like it's, it becomes pressured. Why? Because they always feel there's a there's a jealousy, there's a hatred, there's a there's animosity between them. So that's tzara. So he says ve'enli ela tzarata. That's only tzarata. Meaning like this, I learn all the cases from Achot Ishto. Why? Because I learned it from Yibum. Yibum it says Aleah, Achot Ishto it says Aleah. So I learned that even if it's going to be a Bimkom Mitzvah like Yibum, there's no such thing as doing Yibum even for a Mitzvah. If you have a, uh, uh, how do you call it, a, 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 um, a Hitnagshut, how do you, you have a confrontation of a family member, which you cannot do. That's Achot Isha. Now we wanted to learn sarata. How do we learn sarata? Sarata, now we learn from the word litzror. And how do we know now tzarat sarata becomes also, also exempt? So it says, Samunomar, litzror de lo latzor. Again, in the Mishnah, it's written, but how do we know that in the Mishnah? The Mishnah has to learn it from somewhere. I can't just invent because the word said litzror and it didn't say latzor. If it would have said the word latzor alea, bechaya, Latsor is tzara. When it says litzror, it's con- double connotation of tzara. So it's tzara and tzara tzara. Because of the extra, you understand? Because it says litzror and it didn't say latsor. The eli ela chotisha, but this is only to do with a chotisha. Right? Shar harayot. How do I know about any other woman? How do I know about any other woman? Okay? 
So he says, Amarta ma achot isha miuchedet shehir va vechayvim al zedun akareva shegirta achatat. Achot isha, she's miuchedet. You know why? She's an ervat youth, and your chayav, if a person purposely goes with his sister-in-law, it's karet. If it was by accident, it's chatat. Because remember, whenever zedunu karet, shegirto chatat. That's also by yichot shabbat. Right? If in yichot shabbat, if he's mechalil shabbat de mezid, he gets killed and everything if there's a demon atra. If right now he did it the mezid, but there's no witnesses, he gets karet. If he was mechalel shabbat the shogeg, he brings a chatat because anytime that you're going to have zedono karet, she gato chatat. He thought it was his wife. It was his sister. Uh, how did he do that? Yeah, how does he do that? You have to remember it's, oh. what it's dark. Right? they used to live. Right? they used to live Wait, in conditions. Good. What? Did, no, no. Yeah, they used to live in conditions. Yeah. yeah. That's only and all the other women, how do you know? So Marta, you said just like a chotisha is miuchedet that it's an erva, and a person is going to be chayava zedona karet if you did it purposely karet, and then she got to chatat, vasura liyavam, and she's still prohibited to the yavam. Of course she erva. So anybody that's also an erva, the chayavim al zedona karet, and she got to chatat, and it's going to be chayav karet. And if it was done accidentally, chatat, vasura liyavam, it's going to be asur liyavam. But that's only the arayot themselves. So Amarta, you're going to say, just like a chot is miuchedet, just like by a chot is designated that she's an erva, she's considered a, 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 a kin, a blood kin that you're not allowed to have relations with, and you're going to be chayav azeduna karet v'shigut achatat, and v'asur al yabam, sarata asura, and her sara is also asur, from here, the rabbis say, from here we learn, the rabbis learn, so from here, from I learn on everything. I learn on anything which is an erva, not only achotisha, anything which is an erva, and I learn that just like the achotisha is going to be poter tzara, the tzara tzarata, not only tzarata, right? Tzara tzarata, so too it's going to be exempting as well. So says the Gemara, right? Yachol shani marbesh af shesh arayot chamurot melu. One second. Maybe I'm going to, I'm almost finished. Maybe you're going to come and you're going to add on another six arayot chamurot, right? Which are more chamurot. Which arayot are more chamurot? Also on achiv mehaviv, on the father's side. Because if you pay attention, everything that we mentioned in our Mishnah was on the mother's side. Did you pay attention? Look at the Mishnah. The Mishnah says, right? Okay, the daughter, the granddaughter, his wife's daughter, the granddaughter, the mother-in-law, the, those. Then it says, Achoto me'imo, the sister from the mother. Achot imo, the aunt from the mother, meaning the mother's sister, right? And then you go to the, but everything is always me'imo. What about Aviv? And Aviv is more strict because Aviv is from the father. So maybe I'm going to come and I'm going to include from the father's side, which are more, or which should also be Asurot. So Amarta, you said no. Ma achotishto, just like your wife's sister, right? Is miuchedet she's here vav v'raiv v'chayvinan zeduna karet shekatar chatat v'ershal li nasel leachim, right? Basura liyabam, and you could be permitted to get married to the brothers, and it's still a sura to the yabam. Sarata sura and sarata sura, so too that the nerva chayvinan zeduna karet shekatar chatat v'ershal li nasel leachim basura liyabam sarata sura. Yatsu shesh arayot chamurot elu. This comes to exclude the shesh arayot chamurot. Because since they can never get married to the brothers, their tzarotehem are permitted. That tzara is only from a brother that dies, right, without children. Azara shamanu. Okay? Onesh minayin. This is very famous to our old Gemara. That whenever the pasuk is talking about an isur of a chotisha, we are learning from there an azhara. Azhara means a warning to not do something. But you also need a pasuk to teach you the punishment. Meaning, I could give you a warning, but exactly, but I need to give you a pasuk to give you a punishment because if not, why are you going to punish? I can warn you, don't do this. But if I'm not going to warn you, you're going to get a punishment. I cannot give you a punishment because I never told you about it. So the Gemara says, azhara shamanu. Onish minayin. How do we know about the onish of punishment? So he says, Amar says in the pasuk, there in the pasuk about all the arayot, it says, Ki kol asher ya'asem, ikol atovot ele, 
anybody that does have any of these toy vote of these abominations, then so they're going to get karet. So from here, the fact that the Torah puts all the arayot together and they're going to be chayav karet, so therefore, so to ervar vetsarata, which go to yibum, also is going to be an onesh of karet. They learn it from this pasuk because we put everybody in the same pot. You understand? And you said the same thing. So says the Gemara Tama, the Katav Rechmana. One second. Now that we just finished this, the Gemara is going to actually start judging upon this case of 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 uh, What does it say like this? Tama the Katav Rechmana Aleha. The only reason why was because it was written by a Chotisha Litzrol Lel Galot Aleha Alehah Bechaya. Halav Achi. It would have been written Aleha. Hava Mina. I would have thought to say a Chotisha Miyabemet. I would have thought to say the Chotisha and anybody else is Mia Bemet. My Tama. What's reason? How does it make sense that I'm going to say that a Chotisha is Mia Bemet? So answer the Gemara, Damninan, because I would say, What is it saying in the Pasuk? The Pasuk says you're not allowed to get married to your wife's sister during her lifetime. What is that? That's a positive or negative commandment? Negative commandment. The Mitzvah of Yibum is a positive commandment or negative commandment? Positive, positive, positive. commandment. So I would have thought in the Havamina, Ati ase vedachi lo taase, that comes a positive commandment of Yibum and pushes off the negative commandment, you know, let's get married to the sister. And then I would say that all the other cases will also be permitted. Kamash Malan, it comes to teach you that when it says Aleha, and we learn the Gzira Shaba, so therefore Aleha means even in a case of Yibum, because it says Yibam Aleha. So for, since it says the word Aleha, that comes to teach you that even in the case of Yibum, you're still not allowed to get married to her. And we don't apply the rule of Aseh Dachi So says the Gemara, one second. But I also have another question. Says the Gemara, Eimar Damrinu, when do we say the concept of Ati Aseh Dachi that a positive commandment comes and pushes off a negative commandment, when it's a Lota Aseh Greida, when it's only a Lota Aseh. But if you have a Lota Aseh Shishbo Karet, but if you have a negative commandment that also has Karet, Midachi, does it actually push it off? Meaning, if it's just a negative commandment, a love, but there's no karet involved, so therefore a positive commandment pushes off a negative commandment. But if you have a negative commandment that has karet, can a positive commandment push it off? A positive com- commandment can push off a negative commandment. There's positive, but no one has karet. So the two, and furthermore, lota se greida minalim. How do we know by lota se by itself that it is push off the dachi? So it says in the Gemara. Right? And the the You're not allowed to wear tzitzit. But then it mentions the mitzvah tzitzit. So therefore, the fact that there's a juxtaposition, there's a hekesh, it's brought back in the same pasuk. One of them is pasuk yudalef, and one of them is pasuk yudbet. One right after another. So for, since it's written pasuk yudalef, you're not allowed to wear shanez. Pasuk yudbet, you have to make tzitzit. So the fact that the Torah is coming and putting them together, it comes to tell you that you could do tzitzit, even if you have to put shanez. On tzitzit, you could put shanez. So therefore, why? Because the positive commandment of tzitzit pushes off the negative commandment of shatnes. So he says, from here we learn for everything else. So therefore, we're going to continue with Zerat Hashem tomorrow.